Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about how to solve a convex hull using Jarvis March algorithm. So what is a convex hull? Suppose you have a 2D plane and you have a bunch of points on this plane. So convex hull is drawing a bound around this plane such that the bound is smallest possible. So for these set of points, a convex hull would look something like this from this point to this point and this point. So what we're looking for is these sets of points around which we are going to draw this bound. There are a bunch of algorithms to solve convex hull. The Jarvis, Jarvis algorithm is the simplest of them. There are faster algorithms like Graham's algorithms and Chan's algorithm and hopefully in the future video we can talk about that too. So next let's see how Jarvis March works. Here we have a bunch of points from x1 to x8 and we are trying to draw a boundary around these points such that all the points are covered and the boundary is minimal. Uh, also this question is on a lead code with the name erect the fence. So first we do is we start with the leftmost point. Here the leftmost point is x1. So x1 is definitely an answer. Why? Because he's the leftmost point so the boundary has to go through him. So this is our starting point. Now from x1 we are going to pick, we are going to find the next point. So we are going to try every possible point and we are going to see who is the leftmost point from x1's perspective. So what we are going to do is we are going to pick, randomly pick, pick the next point and let's say the next point is x2. So we are saying that this could be the potential boundary. And this won't be the potential boundary if we can find any point who is on the left side going from x1 to x2. So any point who is on this side. So the next point we pick is uh, uh, x3. So we are asking ourselves, is x3 on the left of this line from x1 to x2? So if, if, you're, looking, if you're looking from this direction, x3 is on the left of this line going from x1 to x2. So we are saying is that x2 is uh, x1 to x2 uh, x2 x1 to x2 is not in our answer. Instead, our next potential point is x3. So how how do we find out that a point is on the left of a certain line uh, line segment or not? And for that, we are going to use a cross product and I'm going to talk about that later on in the video. So for now, we're just concentrating on finding the leftmost point. So our, our, new, our new line is from x1 to x3 and we are saying that is there any point who is on the left of this line from x1's perspective? So the next point we pick here is x4. Is x4 on the left of x1 to x3? It is. So we are saying is that x3, x1 to x3 is also no good. Instead we are saying is that x1 to x4 might be our answer. Now from x4, now we are again looking for more points. So the next point we pick is x5. If we extended this line, is x5 on the left side of this line? Yes. If you're looking from x1's perspective, x5 is on the left. So we are saying that x1 to x4 is also not good and instead we are extending this to x5. Now we are saying is there anything on the left of x5? So the next point we pick is x6. Is x6 on the left of x1 to x5? It's not, it's on the right side. So we don't pick x6. Similarly x7 and x8 are on the right side of this x1 to x5. So we don't pick them either. So we are set. So this is our next uh, this is our next point. x5 is our next point and this is our boundary. So next let's see how it's going to work with x5 and the next point from x5. Now we are going to repeat the same process from the x5's perspective. Also I, ha I have added x1 and x5 in our result. So the first point I pick is x1 and we are trying to find who is the leftmost point from the x5's perspective. So first point I pick is x1, then the next point I pick is x2. So if I had a line from here to here, this would be the left side and this would be the right side from x5's perspective. So I'm asking myself, is x2 on the left or on the right? So x2 is on the left. 
So then our new hypothetical boundary is from x5 to x2. And I'll repeat the process. So the next point I pick is x3. So if I have a line going from x5 towards x2, x3 is on the left side of that line. So what we are saying is that uh, x2 is no good. Instead, our new hypothetical boundary is x3. Now the next point I pick is x4. And this, looking from x5, this is the right side, this is the left side. So x4 is on the right side, so we won't pick x4. The next point I pick is x6. If I was looking down from x5 to x3, this is again the right side, so we won't pick x6 either. The next point we find is x7. If I was looking from x5 toward, towards x3, x7 is on the exact same line. So x7 is a collinear point. Uh, so points which are on the same line are collinear points. So what we're going to do is we need to do special handling for our collinear points. So for between x3 and x7, we look who is farthest away from x5. So that point is x7. So x7 will be our new target point and we'll add x3 to the collinear points. So this is just a special handling for collinear points. So now I'm looking from x5 to x7. Is there any point which is on the left side? So the only point remaining is x8, and he's clearly on the right side looking down from x5 to x7. So that's it. So what this means that x7 is our is x5 to x7 is going to be in our is is the boundary from x5 to x7 is going to be in an answer. So what we're going to do is also we're going to add all the collinear points. Uh, also in the result. So x3 will go into the result and x7 will go into the result and x7 will be our new starting point and also we clear up the collinear point at this point. So we are saying is that this line has become permanent and x, x3 and x7 are, in, are on this boundary lines. So now we'll repeat the same process from x7's perspective. So first point we pick is x1 and now we are saying is that is there any point looking from x5 towards x, x1? Is there any point on the left side? So this is the left side, this is the right side. So second point we pick is x2. x2 is clearly on the right side looking from x1 to x7 to x1. x4 is on the right side. X, uh, x3 is on the right side. x6 is a collinear point. So and so we're going to look who is farther away from x7, x1 or x6. So it's x7. So we add x6 to the collinear points here. And finally, the last and then the last point x8. He is on the left side, looking from x1 to x, looking from x7 to x1. So we, this line is not going to be permanent. Instead, we are going to have a new line from here to here. And since this, this point, since we are not interested in this point anymore, we get rid of his collinear points as well. And now there is nothing else remaining, which means that x8 must be the leftmost point looking from x1's perspective. So we are going to make it a permanent line and also add x8 to our result. And finally, repeat the same thing from x8 perspective. So first point we pick is x1. And now we are saying, is there any line? Is there any point on the left side of this? So x2 is not. It's on the right. X3, x4, x5, x6, and x7. All of them are on the right side, looking from x1 towards x8 towards x1. So what we do is we make this line a permanent line, and now we have reached our starting point. X1 is a point from which we started. It means that we have found our boundary points. X1, x5, x3 x7, x8, and back finally to x1. So next, let's see how we're going to find that a point is on the left side of the vector or right side of the vector. And for to do that, we are going to use cross product. How do we find if a point is on the left side of a given line or on the right side of a given line? So here we have C, which is on the left side of A to going from A to B and D, which is on the right side going from A to B. And to do that, we do a cross product. 
So remember right hand thumb rule from the high school. So we, here, we, here our AB is this line vector and AC is this vector and the result is positive direction so that's the thumb and if it was the other way around and this is AB and this is AC and the result was the result would be negative so thumb is in the downward direction. So exact same thing here. If if a cross product of AB and AC is positive, then C is on the left side from A to B's perspective. On the other hand, if cross product is negative, like the case would be for the D, then it's on the right side. So how do we find the cross product? Cross product is Y2X1 minus Y1X2. And here I have defined what X1, uh, X2, Y1, Y2 are. So I did this little math before. So this will be minus 2 into minus 2 minus minus 1 into minus 1 and this is 4 minus 1 and 3. So since this result is positive, it means that C is on the left side of this vector AB. If you did the same math with AB to AD, AB to AD, then this this number would come out to be less than uh, this number would come out to be less than zero which would tell us that d is on the right side from uh, uh, from a to b so next let's talk about the time complexity of jarvis algorithm time complexity of this algorithm is o of n into h where n is the total number of points in our system while h is the number of points on the boundary so if the number of points at the boundary is very small, then this algorithm is very efficient. If not, then in the worst case, this algorithm could be O of n squared. The the, this is the time complexity. The space complexity of this algorithm will be O of n because in the worst case, uh, we might be holding all the points in this collinear points. So remember we had that special handling of collinear points we were, where we were holding all the collinear points. So in the worst case, we might end up holding all the points. So this is the time complexity and this is the space complexity. Next, let's look at the code for this algorithm. Let's look at the code for Jarvis Marsh. So the, so the main function is find convex cell where we are given a, a, an array of points and we want to return the list of points which forms the convex around this original set of points. So our first task is to find the leftmost point. So we set start as our point zero and iterate from point one all the way till the end and see who has the lowest x and start becomes that point. So our start is the point is our starting point or the leftmost point from which we are going to find the convex hull using Jarvis March. So we set current to start. Then we're going to have a result set which is a hash set for storing our result. The, the way algorithm is, is written, it might have duplicate values. So to work around the duplicate values, I'm using a hash set. And I'm going to do is, I'm going to add start to the result. Also I have uh, to find the collinear points, I have this list collinear points. So our logic is going to be like while true. So we're going to stay in this loop until we reach our start point. So here is the break condition. If our next target becomes equal to start, it means it means that we have circled back to our start point, then we'll break out of this while loop. So first we'll uh, so first we'll find next target. Next target, so our our current point is current, and we are trying to find who is the next target or who is the next point from this current point in this in this convex or in this envelope which we are trying to form around the points. So we'll say that point zero is that next target. And now going from point one till the end, we are seeing, we are trying to find who is the leftmost point from current's perspective. So if points are is same as current, then we'll obviously ignore this point. Otherwise we are finding, an, we are finding a cross product. So we are finding a cross product of current, next target and point size. If this value, if this value is greater than zero, it means that points i is on the left side from current to next target. It means that we can ignore next target and set points i as the next target. So if this value is greater than zero, then 
next target becomes equal to point psi and then we also reset the collinear points because there is no collinear points for points i right now if value is equal to equal to zero it means that current next target and points i are collinear points so at that point we are seeing who is closer to current who of this next target and points i is closer to current so we are going to find the distance if this value is less than zero, it means that next target is closer to current than points i. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add next target to collinear points and set next target as points i. So we're saying that we're gonna pick the next target as a point which is farther away of the two collinear points. Otherwise, if points i is closer to current, then we're gonna just add points i to collinear points. If value is less than zero, so the, if the value of this cross product is less than zero, it means that points i is on the right side of this vector current to next target, so we just ignore points i. So we keep uh, staying in this for loop till the end of, since till we have seen all the points, at which point the next target will be the leftmost point from current's perspective. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, if there are any points in the collinear points, we're gonna add them to the results result set. Also, if the next target has become equal to start, which means that we have looped through all the points and reached the start point, then we can break out of the for, break out of this while loop. Otherwise, we'll add result, uh, we'll add this next target to the result and set current is equal to next target. So next target becomes our new current and from that current's perspective, we are trying to find the leftmost points among all the points. So we keep doing this till next target becomes equal to start. And in the end, we just return an array list of all the result we found so far. Let's quickly look at this two function, distance and cross product. So distance is, uh, this returns a negative value if B is closer to A compared to C and it returns a zero if a b and if b and c are equidistant from a and it returns a value greater than zero when c is closure to b uh, is closure to a compared to b and cross product if uh, c is on the left of a and b then uh, then the result is greater than zero if c is uh, if result is equal to equal to zero then a b and c are collinear points and if result is less than zero then C is on the right side of A, B. So this is all I have to talk about uh, uh, Jarvis marching for finding convex hull. Uh, the link to this uh, code will be in the descrip description section of the video. Thanks for watching this video.